Well, good day. Uh, this is Dr. Troy Spurrow. Uh, we're going to be talking today thyroid. So with this video, I'm just going to go through one of the most important conversations that I have and we have at Synapse uh, in regards to thyroid conversion. So it's one of those scenarios where um, many, many people have challenges. And so what I'm going to do here is just uh, share my screen and uh, we're going to start with uh, just bringing up a diagram of the thyroid. So basically, when we're looking at thyroid, uh, what you're seeing here in front of you, that uh, uh, gland right here, right in the middle, see it's being circled there, that's your thyroid. It's on the front part of the neck. And um, what it does is it releases T4. And you see that little circle with T4 right there? That's inactive thyroid. Now, in the body, that thyroid then starts to uh, get converted to T3, which I'm circling right now. And that is called active thyroid. So the thyroid is very important. It helps set the metabolism. And basically, it's kind of like the key that turns on the engine for the car. Uh, without it, you don't get to go anywhere. So every cell in the body needs thyroid. So that T4 to T3 conversion, we can start to see some problems with that. For example, if you look off to the right, um, factors that increase the conversion, you need selenium and you need zinc. Now zinc is also important for the immune system. It's also important for the digestive system as far as the stomach and producing stomach acid. So we can get zinc deficient pretty pretty quickly and then selenium is very very important as well and five brazil nuts a day generally is enough to give you the selenium that you need to help at least with this conversion process so many people will be actually making enough of the t4 um, but not converting it to t3 and they're going to need zinc or selenium your labs will tell you because the the t4 will be in the low or normal range um, and the T3 will end up being very low. Or sometimes if T4 is high normal and T3 is low uh, abnormal, then you can tell that there's a bit of a conversion problem with the T4 inactive to T3 active. So that can be a simple fix for a lot of people with thyroid problems. You can see in the upper uh, right-hand corner here too, factors that contribute to the proper production of the T4 thyroid hormone, you need iron, iodine, tyrosine, zinc again, selenium again, vitamin E, B2, B3, B6, vitamin C, and vitamin D. So there's a lot of vitamins that go into the production of these thyroid hormones. So again, what could block this, uh, this thyroid um, Part at this uh, at this part sorry we've got T4 being made and if you look over here onto the left side of the screen just highlighting it right there these are the factors that inhibit proper production of thyroid hormones stress there's that word stress again you're gonna be hearing that uh, throughout a lot of what we talk about at synapse infections trauma radiation and medications can block the production of T4 Fluoride is an antagonist to iodine. So fluoride actually irritates making iodine. So a lot of people don't even know that they're actually uh, irritating their thyroid by putting something in their mouth that they've been told to put into for their entire life, and that's fluor fluorinated toothpaste. So other things like pesticides, mercury toxicity, cadmium, lead levels uh, can also do that autoimmune disease, specifically um, celiac or even autoimmune against the thyroid can also help block the conversion or the making of that T4 and then other deficiencies can occur for the conversion problem. Now, one of the other factors that we see a lot is a problem with what's called reverse T3. Now, that's T3 and that's reverse T3 right there. And with this, it's very important to know that uh, reverse T3 and T3 bind uh, on the cell, but they compete for those binding sites. So I'm going to say it this way. 
If you look at the list to the left here on this chart, you're going to see a whole list of things that uh, increase conversion of T4, inactive thyroid, to reversed T3, which is an inactive form of T3. One of the ones I'm going to start with is, is second on the list. Trauma, you can see, is one of the causes of increased reverse T3 and, and the most common one. When we are in a traumatic accident, our body basically wants to block all of the metabolism for the cells that we don't need at the time. So we're going to be focusing on uh, recovering from the injury. So all of our thyroid efforts are going to be going to uh, the immune system response, the tissue repair response, in the where the local injury site is, uh, certain brain function. Uh, just beautiful, beautiful design if you think about it because it's blocking all the areas that don't need to burn up the fuel for your cells. Instead, it's going to go to uh, where you were injured from the trauma. However, this can also start to build up slowly over time because of stress. That's another one of the markers. A low calorie diet is very, very, very common with this reverse T3 marker as well. So um, low calorie diet can be good uh, for small time periods, but if you're doing it for too long a period, then it can actually start to affect your thyroid and slow down your metabolism. Inflammation is one of the most common causes that can block this. And then of course, we've got environmental toxins, including a lot of pesticides that mimic uh, estrogens that and estrogens themselves can come in and displace a lot of the thyroid hormone. So when we get these uh, toxins out of balance, they can start to influence our thyroid. Infections are another one that can generally cause us to uh, have injuries internally or inflammation that causes increase in reverse T3. Liver and kidney dysfunction, usually not severe, but uh, even mild liver and kidney dysfunction when it's chronic. Uh, can do this. So we see a, a, a buildup there. And then certain medications can also uh, cause this reaction. Now, a lot of times reverse T3 and a full thyroid panel is not tested by your medical doctor because reverse T3 just has a, a fast half-life. That means it can disappear really quickly. And so it can be um, not the best test on its own. But when you get a complete panel with T4, T3, reverse T3, uh, TSH and the thyroid antibodies, it gives you more of a complete picture of what's actually happening with the thyroid, especially when you combine it with a good history. And now this list of all the factors that affect your thyroid, you can start to see the different things uh, implicated in improper thyroid function. So once you have the thyroid actually on the cell surface. It st stimulates the uh, nucleus and the mitochondria to power up that cell, whether it's a brain cell or a muscle cell or a parietal cell, which is in the stomach. Uh, it's important that the thyroid stimulate all these cells. Now, the factors that improve cellular sensitivity to thyroid hormones are vitamin A, exercise, and there's that zinc again. So you can start to see there are a few basic patterns here that can really help improve thyroid function. Really work on reducing your stress, uh, taking care of infections and environmental chemicals and toxins, and making sure you are absorbing and nutrienting yourself with iodine, zinc in particular, selenium, B vitamins, vitamin D, vitamin A, also very good for your immune and defense systems as well. So in a nutshell, here's a quick little review of all the factors that affect your thyroid function. It's brief, but to the point. We thank you very much, and uh, we look forward to your continued healing at Synapse.